Hello, my absolutely beautiful Virgo friends, and welcome to your horoscope for 2023, where Virgo, the big news as we're even coming into 2023 is to remember that your ruling planet, along with Mars, are coming into 2023 retrograde. So while that is nothing to go hide under a rock about or anything like that, it is to set the stage for you immediately in this energy of revision. We're not forcing and pushing forward, but also Mercury is retrograde in this energy of Capricorn, which means we're coming into 2023 with a signature, a pattern. And listen, I'm a Virgo rising. So Virgos, I know we like to spot patterns because if you can see the pattern and understand it, you can allow it to work efficiently, right? So flashback to January of 2022, where we had Venus retrograde in this Capricorn area. And we were really re-looking at our value structures, right? We were re-looking at how do we achieve? Is this area helping me to achieve? For you, this had a lot to do with the fifth house, Virgo, things around children, joy, expression, play, pleasure, you know, beginning of new businesses or endeavors. These things were lit up for you. Now you're back in a revision to say, okay, what did I learn and what would I achieve under this energy and where do I need to reflect and maybe bring something to finishing, right? It's not the time for initiating things. Instead, we're finishing. So I really want you to hold that in your mind, especially because Mercury is your ruling planet. So truly, you are crossing into 2023 with no set of like full vigor, you know, in your back pocket. Now, Mars being in retrograde, it's actually in the energy energy of Gemini, which funny enough is another Mercury ruled sign. So do you really see how I'm pointing you to coming in, come in with the energy and the attitude of slow down, but it's about slow down, reflect on your career. That's that Gemini energy for you, your career, your soul level calling, what you do in public, you know, the name that we call you, your identification with authority, right? Your identification with aging, time, changing um, your status in the world. So whatever that has meant for you, your action and your strategy that you've been putting into this employment or organizational area of your life really needs a little bit of your attention because you need to kind of reprogram the strategy that you've been using there. And that Mercury retrograde here in the fifth house is really encouraging you to take Take pleasure in your achievements. Take pleasure in the passage of time. Take pleasure. Bring your new conceptions out into the world. Sign all your documents. Go back, redo whatever it is you need to do, but take the opportunity to be strongly in the energy of revision. Now, I will say this as one last thought, Virgo. If these combination of retrograde energies are really pointing you to this idea that you need to increase your social life or re increase pleasure in some way by like a vacation or something relaxing, please be very true to that and pay attention and bring it into your life, okay? Now we're going to see Mars and Mercury come out of retrograde on January 12th and January 18th, respectively. Now, as we continue on through the year, keep in mind that I will always cover all of the retrogrades from the inner to the outer planets in the weekly and in the monthly videos. We really get into that because I enjoy it and I think that it has a lot of purpose. So the thing you do want to keep in mind, though, is that the Mercury retrogrades that happen throughout 2023 are all in Earth energies. You are an Earth energy. So this may be a revision year that feels a little bit more comfortable to you because it brings it down to brass tacks, right? It's where the rubber meets the road. Earth signs work in the material plane. It's touchable. It's tangible. It's practical. So as you go into revision of things this year, just know you're doing it in a very earthy kind of way. It's out of the mind, out of those clouds and onto the feet and onto the earth. Okay. As we get to March 7th, we're going to have a pretty significant movement of Saturn moving out of the energy of Aquarius and moving into the energy of Pisces. Now, as Saturn has been traveling through this energy of Aquarius, it's really been lighting up your sixth house space. Now, this is the space of health, wellness, daily routines, 
fitness, nutrition, animals, like small pets, don't think horses, think like cats, dogs, things like that, ways you've been of service to people. Okay, so in this area, Saturn has been calling for a lot of discipline to come to your table. It's also though, through the discipline, through raising you up and taking you to the next level, you know, maybe you, you did a certification or something like that, or you finished a really big project that you were working on, or you realized that, um, you want to be more freelance or independent or something like that, or you need a different care of medical practice in your life. It also has matured you. It takes you to the next level. And at that next level, when you have raised up, you've become empowered and elevated, Saturn celebrates your success. So you've really had that going in this sixth house space for you. Now, as Saturn moves into Pisces on March 7th, we're going to light up the seventh house space. And this is about conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, okay? Now, the very first relationship I always ask us to look at is the relationship with you and whatever you call a higher power, whatever that looks like in your life. How are you doing in that connection? Do you feel safe, protected, surrounded, and trusting? And if not, let's be looking at that relationship. Second of all, the relationship of you with you you Virgo, right? Where are you feeling like you're ready to step into your expertise, step into your mastery? Maybe you're ready and you, you feel like, okay, I, I am ready to carry a tradition that is time, time honored, a vision forward, right? But also in that seventh house, we have business and personal relationships. Maybe it's a consultant. Maybe, you know, if it's something coming through the lens of an open enemy, you've got to hire an attorney. I also think sometimes in the seventh house, we can see our work with the public, but it would be more along the lines of you creating some kind of partnership. Now, one thing I want to bring your attention to is that whatever the partnership is, Virgos tend to heal with their hands. Even if you are a, a mathematician, something in the Virgo magic comes through healing and changing and improving through your hands, through policies, through practices, through guidance that comes through your hands. So as we're looking at Saturn being here in this Pisces energy, it also joins this Neptunian energy. So there is this sense and there is this story around your relationships where you know, what is the vision that you've had or the ideal that you've had around your career life, your um, personal life relationships, whatever that is for you, Saturn is helping to take that that intuitive dream, vision, calling that you've had and crystallize it because Saturn will put it in like a container. It makes a space for the dream, right? Because you can have all the dreams that you want. If you cannot make them tangible, then they're just dreams and visions and ultimately regrets down the road. So Saturn is helping to create something that I think you've been visioning into your life and intuitively calling in for quite some time. Now, when we get to the 23rd of March, we're going to see another pretty significant movement of energy where Pluto is going to move out of the energy of Capricorn, which has been working over here in your fifth house since 2008, and it's going to move into the energy of Aquarius. Now, we're not getting the full meal deal here, okay, because when we get to May 1st, we're going to see Pluto begin this retrograde, so it's not staying for its full tour into Aquarius, but it does... Um, it does pique your attention to what you need to be paying attention to, what needs to, to die off, what psychologically you need to unpeel and unwind because it doesn't fit for you anymore. So as Pluto has been working in this fifth house since 2008, a lot of changes around your ideas of, of family of children, of uh, independent business ownership, of conception, joy, pleasure, play, expression, these things have been really significantly changing. And I would, I would also think, Virgo, that plenty of changes have also come to your social life as well, right? Because we really start to find out who doesn't fit and who can't travel with us anymore. And what Pluto has also been doing here is weeding out your garden. So truly, if it's like, okay, I had this misunderstanding with this person, or, 
you know, this company or this, I, I had a different idea around how my children should be, whatever the conversation was, Pluto was really giving you a different view of that. It was making you look at, is it my baggage that is blinding me here? Am I looking at this situation through, through my own wound or am I looking at it objectively, right? So it's a time where a lot of these things I think have been coming to your table. And truly for you, Virgo, releasing fear around not constantly doing and not constantly being in a state of improvement, I think are real fears that maybe presented themselves. So now that we're going to see Pluto move from this Capricorn journey into this Aquarius journey, we're going to start to work on this sixth house energy. So now we're back to this conversation and this connection around work, the workplace, co-workers, um, daily routines, habits, you know, the, 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 um, the health of your daily routine. So what it also means is that things are going to be changing. It is time for you to look at the power struggle that exists within your daily routine. It's time for you to acknowledge the death and the rebirth that is happening within your physical, psychological, and mental health as well. And furthermore, I think really in this sixth house energy, we start to look at the connection between um, mental health, because this is an air energy, and emotional health as well. So there's really this conversation happening there. Now, I'm also curious, you'll have to let me know, Virgos, as your year progresses, but what is your connection that is also changing around technology? Are you needing to innovate in some way or you're bringing innovation um, into the lives of the people around you in some ways? Because it's like, hey, it's okay for us to move forward or it's okay for there to be more ease than there really has been since, you know, we've, we've seen this last movement since 2008. So whatever that looks like for you, this is a pivotal piece of your journey to release some things that are causing more pain and more power struggle than are actually needed and to develop an invest things that allow this routine to be a lot healthier. And that's, that's really a very big deal when we're talking about this energy, okay? Now let's talk about the eclipse structures as they are happening throughout 2023, because we've seen the Taurus and Scorpio axes happening already. We experienced that throughout 2022, but this year we're also going to welcome in the Aries Libra axis. So new information will absolutely be presenting itself. On April 20th, we're going to have a new moon solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries, and this is going to light up your eighth house. This is all about joint resources, sex, death, birth, rebirth, um, intimacy, vulnerability, your fears, your greatest healing, those possessions that you have that come through. This used to be a uh, liability for me, and now I've been able to turn it to an asset. Counseling, healing, but also practical things, right? Like estates, insurance, investments, uh, wills, maybe things having to do with a loan, you needed to take out a loan for something, whatever it is, this new moon solar eclipse really brings to your attention a bit of challenge, but it is not challenge that you cannot undertake. This is 29 degrees of Aries. It's a pretty advanced degree, which is the signal to us that yes, you may be challenged to work on your financial life or work on your vulnerability life, work on your sex life, work on your healing life, but you do have the capacity to do it. It's really about, are you prepared to champion your own cause? Now, this is going to play out for the next three to six months from the 20th, okay? A couple weeks later on the 5th, we're going to see a lunar eclipse at 14 degrees of Scorpio, and this is going to light up your third house space. So communication, travel, short distance travel, okay, um, decision making, things that you're learning, transportation, any of these things that have to do with networks of communication really are going to be lighting up for you. Now, because this is a lunar eclipse in Scorpio, and we have been working in this axis already, that lunar eclipse says we need to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment in some way. So in the third house, one of the things I would tell you is um, 
if you did have decisions you needed to make, like let's say you needed to decide if you're going to buy the house, sell the house, sign the contract, don't sign the contract, be a freelance person and sign a contract or not, whatever it is, you know, fulfill assignments, <laughs> finish that homework, right? Whatever it is, I think that this full moon gives you the courage and the internal motivation to make the changes that you need to here. Because really, all of this is about supporting yourself. It's all about releasing connections that you don't need that are stopping you from having making decisions that pull you forward as opposed to backwards. So I think it's, I do think it will be an intense eclipse and we'll cover it a bit more, but I'm pretty excited about that one for you. Now on October 14th, we're going to have another solar eclipse and this one's going to happen at 21 degrees of Libra. So of course this is in your second house. So you really do in the second and eighth house axes this year, there is a big call to your money. How do you make money? How do you value yourself to bring money into your life? Are you marketing yourself, right? All of those things. But this particular solar eclipse is um, the indicator I get here, first of all, is that truly, I don't, I don't know if you've got a big purchase planned. I, maybe you don't even know if you have a big purchase planned right now, but it may be something that you're making a big purchase or a big investment or something like that. Or maybe you're meeting with a financial advisor or a planner or something like that to help get new financial things in place, which wouldn't that make sense if you have a baby or you take on a business or you take a risk in some way, you're going to want to have somebody with some pretty expert advice to help you navigate that financial scene. But more than that, Virgo, I also think lighting up the second house is about you shining your worth and your value out into the world. What are your creative skills and talents that you take out into the world and you bring an income in from that? And can you hold your own or are you out in these streets charging way less than your skill and your talent actually deserve. And that is not a valuing of you, Virgo. It is a valuing and understanding the skills that you have that are serving and helping others and then charging responsibly for that. So that may be a big conversation that you are having. Now we're going to have our last eclipse on October 28th, which is going to be at five degrees of Taurus. And this lights up your ninth house space, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, um, publishing that book, uh, publishing that podcast, international travel, higher education, training, certification, legal things, all of those fall into the realm of the ninth house, foreign information, foreign people, foreign customs, right? All of that falls in here. Now, this particular eclipse is going to be in the space of Jupiter and Uranus at the same time. So while all of this energy is pumping through this house, one of the things I think of for you is, first of all, are you changing job? right? Are you changing? Are you expanding? Did you finish that education program and now you're taking it out into the world? And it doesn't mean that you're taking it out and it's fully ready to make tons of money or anything like that, but you're taking something that you've been learning out into the world and you're able to begin offering value with that. And I think that that is really, really important for you to be looking at. Right. Or is this the circumstance when we come out in the ninth house, we're usually serving as some kind of guide or teacher. So are you teaching other people how to do joy, pleasure, things about the body? Right. Taurus is, is, is a sensual sign. All five senses. Are you teaching people about that? Are you teaching online? What are you doing that is allowing you to take skills that you have developed and maximize them and expand them out into the world? So whatever that is and however that actually um, looks like and comes out for you, I will tell you, Virgo, take your expansion on the road. It's a really good time, okay? Now, we're not quite done talking about this year just yet because we've also got to see Jupiter making a move. We're going to get to May 17th and we see Jupiter move into the energy of Taurus. Now, to be clear here, Virgo, Jupiter is going to fly through the energy of Aries and it is going to fly through the energy of Taurus. So these motions, these movements really are happening um, 
quite quickly for you, okay? So we'll see Jupiter traveling through that eighth house. So again, money, investment, sex, death, birth, intimacy, vulnerability, all of those things will come up and I will tell you, make a solid financial plan for yourself, okay? And then we'll see Jupiter jump into that energy of Taurus in the ninth house. Again, helping you share and spread your wisdom. Right. And the thing about it, Virgo, that I continue to like kind of mull over is that it doesn't your your wisdom that you're passing on doesn't mean that you've reinvented the wheel. Maybe you've invented nothing. Maybe you are sharing something that is age old, but you're showing people the process of how to bring that and integrate that into their life so that they have efficiency and ease. Right. Like, what is it? that you offer. And this is a fantastic time with Jupiter in there to also market yourself in whatever way, even if you're like, Stormy, I'm not looking for a job. I don't, I don't want to market myself. A way that you market yourself as well, just to say I'm alive, I'm here, I'm taking up space and I have wisdom is to just go out in the world, go travel, allow your light to be seen and to be shown. And I think that that is also one way I want you to not forget it, that it is a way that we market and we represent our little pieces of the world that we're traveling in. So don't forget that. Okay, Virgo. All right. Now, before we're going to close out this year, one of the things I want to bring your attention to is especially here in January, I really want to bring your attention to this in January, Virgos, and we'll talk about it in the January forecast. But at the very beginning of this year, yes, we're coming in with these retrogrades. There is this signature for you, um, Virgo, that really makes me want to remind you to get your own financial plan together and maybe look a lot less at funding or judging or engaging with someone else's financial plan, right? It's like, take, get your own house in order first. And really evaluate if the other person who's maybe asking you for a handout or who is asking you to fund them, it's a very financial conversation in some way, if you could actually do service and be of value by engaging um, in that interaction. So just something I really want you to consider. This year's got the potential to be exciting. I think you can do a lot of great work in our healing and being of service, which really lights you up. And I also think it's a fantastic year for you, Virgo, to realize you've got something to market and to offer and to take out into the world that actually helps our communities be better. All right, my beautiful Virgo friends, I love you. I'll see you every week and I'll see you every month as we travel 2023. Bye, my friend.